What's up everybody, King KingGBL here, and welcome back to some Go Battle League. Today I'm going to be showcasing my favourite Ultra League team this season. I got this team idea from another content creator on YouTube, at Taffystar. Go check her out, she's a fantastic creator. She uh, showcased this team a few days ago, so I decided to try this team out. On the very first day I used this team, I went 19, 1 and 5. 19 wins, 1 draw, and 5 losses. I think the draw was like a nailed on win, except for the opponent got free debuffs in that matchup and it ended up just costing me the match, so that's what happens in this game sometimes. Nailed on win, but unfortunately the opponent just gets a ton of debuffs and gets lucky. Um, this team is really strong, I do recommend it. It's been one of the only teams this season that's been kind of working well for me. I want you guys to let me know in the comments down below, how are you finding the new Ultra League meta? Do you feel that it's better than last season? Do you think it's an improvement? Do you think it's worse? In my opinion, Ultra League has gotten slightly more RPS with this update, but I do think there are some uh, very interesting teams. I have noticed that Poison is very, very prevalent and very strong in the Ultra League currently. You see a lot of teams with Tentacruel, uh, Poison Dark Pokemon like Trupion, even Skuntank has been quite popular as well. Um, so Ultra League is looking a lot different, at the very least it is looking fresh, and I don't think it's absolutely horrible. I do think it's been a little bit tricky to find a consistent team this week in Ultra League, so I'm very, very happy that uh, Taffy was able to showcase this team. I was able to copy it and it done very well for me. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. I know a lot of people have enjoyed Ultra League this week. Let me know if you're enjoying it, not enjoying it. Next week we have Psychic Cup and uh, Master League. Should be quite an interesting week. I think Psychic Cup is quite good for climbing. It's more of an energy generation meta. So personally, I'm quite looking forward to Psychic Cup. But I think, as you've noticed this week, there hasn't been that many videos. Next week, I will try to upload as many teams as possible. But in Psychic Cup, to be fair, there's only ever like four or five teams that are viable. I think it could be different this time around. We have Mudslap and Claydol, Galarian Slowbro with Buff Brutal Swing, um, we have Psywave on the Malamar, so we do have a few different things in there, and there's a few Pokemon with Buff to Stunish, which are kind of surprisingly high. So it might be the case that this uh, week's Psychic Cup could be a little bit better than the uh, previous ones, a little bit less condensed, but anyway. We're gonna hop on into the battles here, do me a quick favour, drop a like in the video, it's absolutely free, helps me out a ton, and if you enjoy these videos, only if you enjoy the videos, subscribe. Do it now, it's absolutely free, big thank you. Really appreciate the support in the videos. Uh, hopping into this battle here, we've got Cringe Guard versus Copalion. I, I guess I might as well talk about the team a little bit here. So this team is basically for Alligator lead with these two in the back. Uh, for Alligator is typically weak to things like Grass. Um, yeah, pretty much just Grass, right? Electric. Copalion, Cresselia both do fine into those. Um, Ampharos is a bit of a core breaker for this team, but it's definitely manageable. If you see it in the lead, chip and dip. Cresselia is generally so bulky that it can just take moves. It doesn't really matter if they're super effective or not. Cresselia is an absolute tank. So yeah, those types of things are absolutely fine. And if you have a look at the back Pokemon here, they're both quite weak to the likes of a Talonflame or a Fire-type Pokemon, which of course for Alligator does pretty well into. I think overall this is not like a hard ABB team, it's more of a, a sort of balanced team. And depending on what the lead is, will sort of determine what your safe swap is. So this is kind of a team where you have to maybe play it out a little bit for yourself to learn what you need to do in different matchups. Um, watch my video, you can watch Taffy Star's video on this team as well, and maybe get some insights on the different matchups, different ways you play it. Um, it's more of a balanced team, not just like a straight up ABB, so that's definitely worth keeping in mind. Um, I decided to go Moonblast here on the Cresselium. I think there's definitely an argument to go for Future Sight. What I did really like about Moonblast though is there's so many Poison Darks and it hits them for neutral. Um, unlike a Shadow Drapion, a Moonblast does about 35-40%, probably about 35%, right? So like, if you're ever in a really tough situation, um, you're stuck into Cresselia versus Drapion, you can still do a lot of damage to them, like with Psycho Cots and two Moonblasts, it gets them down into the deeper red. You can survive two crunches unless I think they get the debuff in the first one. So like, that's a very, very fine matchup. That's why I like Moonblast. But I think Future Sight will give you a lot more coverage for like Tenta, uh, Talonflame, and all those types of Pokemon. Also guys, we're about 3 minutes 45 into the video. I want to do a quick announcement here. This is something I've not announced on Twitter or in my Discord. Only a few people know about this at this point. But I'm actually having another baby. I've got two kids already. I've got two sons. Um, six and three. We're having another baby in about a month and a half here. So that's going to be quite interesting. Um, you'll probably notice at some point during the season, I'll probably disappear off for a little while. Um, so definitely very excited about that. I thought I'd let you guys know, man. Today's video, it kind of feels like more of a chill video. I'm going to hop into the sort of gameplay focus commentary here. Uh, but do let me know in the comments down below, guys. Do you like these type of videos where we're just kind of chilling, talking about different stuff? Um, I kind of enjoyed making these videos back when I first started. Because it's kind of like when you first start a channel, you have no expectations. Uh, you haven't set any expectations, right? Whereas I think now, people probably expect me to showcase meta teams and uh, showcase, you know, how to play teams, basically full team guides at this point. Um, whereas before, I was just kind of chilling, talking absolute nonsense. I definitely enjoy that aspect of it. Um, that's probably why Jimmy Finn's one of my favorite content creators in this space, because he just kind of has a laugh, doesn't take things too seriously. Um, whenever I first sort of started here, that's what I kind of thought I would do, just kind of 
have a GBL channel that's not like fully focused on the gameplay, but I think as I became more and more competitive in this game and became more and more focused on improving, I think the gameplay and the commentary has definitely shifted more towards high skill gameplay and more towards uh, like a sort of learning experience as opposed to like me doing some random commentary over a GBL video. But anyway, I wanted to let you guys know we're having a little baby soon. Definitely very excited for it and yeah, you'll probably see me missing for a little while here. I want to run a few ideas by you guys, if you don't mind. Um, I think we went 4-1 that set, by the way. A few ideas I want to run by you. Um, for this channel, you know, these types of videos, I do enjoy making them, but I really feel the need and feel that there's so much untapped potential in this game in terms of the way that people do commentaries. I've been thinking that I might want to start moving into live commentaries a little bit. So, for example, what I would do is, while I'm playing the game, as, as if, imagine if it's a live stream, um, except for I'm doing a commentary while I'm playing. I think that could be really interesting because instead of me uh, doing a sort of video after the fact and like telling you what I was thinking at the time, I can literally tell you in real time what I'm thinking. What I'm also thinking about doing is basically a rank 1 to legend video. So what I would do is basically start a new account, start from zero, um, literally day one, Pokemon Go, zero Pokemon, zero dust, zero everything, and see how long it would take me to build up my account, get from literally rank 1 to legend, right? get my PvP Pokemon built. I know a lot of you are like free-to-play players, rural players who don't really have like uh, a ton of resources to play this game, right? I would like to kind of emulate that in some way, or like, for example, I'll take an account from level one, try my best to like get PvP IVs, um, get some Pokemon built, try to, even if I'm using single move Pokemon, because that's what you have to do at the start. When I very first started GPL, like I didn't have millions of dust just to build a bunch of Pokemon, right? Like I had to build it up from absolute zero. You need to build up Pokemon for battling gyms. You need to build up Pokemon for GPL, for doing raids. Like starting from zero is really, really difficult. So I think that could be very cool if I was to take one or two hours per day, just to basically start building the account up. And I think I wouldn't do like extreme grinding, right? You know how people can do like, oh, I got from level one to 50 in three and a half hours. No, like we're not going to be doing that. Like we're just going to be playing like a normal human being with a job and a life, right? Getting a few hours in here and there, trying to catch a few PVP IVs, building this and that, not going absolutely insane and just going all in on, you know, spending money, playing for like 10 or 12 hours a day. That's not realistic, right? So let me know what your thoughts would be on that. Um, another thing that I'm quite interested in doing on the channel here quite soon is um, tournaments. It's something that I did sort of dip my toes into the water with a few months ago, probably close to a year ago at this point. Uh, Jimmy Finn and I, we done a sub tournament where it was my subs versus his subs. Um, his, his subs actually won that one, but it was kind of like a sort of ladder format, right? Where we basically took people from different ELO ranges and faced them off against each other. So you would have brackets of let's say 2000 to 2100, 21 to 2200, 23 to 24, and those players would be facing off against each other. Um, basically it's a point system where like you get a point for each win and eventually it's going to be legend players versus legend players, leaderboard leaderboarders versus leaderboarders. It was really really fun and interesting and I think it's something that we could definitely do again. Um, I do want to do all sorts of sort of various tournaments on the channel too. I think it's something that's not really been just sort of tapped into to its fullest extent as well. I think running like sort of your tournaments, it, it could be super, super fun. So yeah, let me know your thoughts and opinions on that. I think that could be very fun also. Um, but anyway, back into the sort of gameplay side of things. Let's focus on the video a little bit here for the rest of the video. This team is good. I'm trying to think what I struggled with a little bit. Tentacruel is definitely a little bit awkward for the team. Malamar lead, pretty awkward, but pretty fine. The good thing about Feraligator is it really does not have that many bad leads. Even a normal type, right, resists the Shadow Claws. You can just Hydro Cannon it. Um, if it's a Grass type, you can threaten to go for the Ice Beam. Like, there's really just not that many bad leads for Feraligator. So, like, there's not really that much you struggle with in the lead. It's definitely some of these, like, double poison backlines that you struggle with a little bit um, at certain points. Or if you get, like, a Talon Flame in the back. Those types of things you will struggle with. Um, but in general, like I said, this team is pretty consistent. Um, the opponent shields up the potential future site, which is quite funny here. It's kind of like an almost, a, like most people don't shield that by the way, but that in and of itself is almost a reason to run a future site, or even if you don't have Grass Knot, go for double nukes. The only reason I like Grass Knot better is because for Alligator is so, so common. Grass Knot will not one-shot it, but it gets it really low. Um, so that is definitely really nice, like your Cresselia at the very least can get shields or heavy, heavy damage off for Alligator. So like, in, in my opinion, that's very, very nice. Uh, for alligators in this meta are typically running Ice Beam instead of Crunch. It just makes a lot more sense in this meta. Um, we take out the Malamar. In comes the opponents for alligator. We're up two shields. This is just absolute GG's. The opponent still does have a relatively healthy Tenta. It's in the yellow. 
not quite in Stone Age range. The Tenta is so flipping good in this meta, bro. You gotta get yourself a Tentacruel for this meta, unless they completely shift the meta again, and it just becomes awful. But even with nerfed Skull, like Tenta is so so good. So like, I'm trying to think, how do they nerf Tenta? It, probably by just introducing more Pokemon that counter it, right? If they'd done a huge buff to Psychic types or something, maybe like Tenta's becoming less um, less viable. But apart from that, like Tenda is so good. It's on, I swear, it's on like 90% of teams currently. Um, the opponent did play this side. <laughs> to be fair, like the game was over for the last little while there, but um, the opponent did want to try and do something. Unfortunately for them, nothing was really going to happen. Uh, we have the Guzzy lead here. I like to stay in and chip it first. It's a pretty bad matchup. I consider this to be a good matchup for Cresselia, by the way. The opponent's double weak to Moonblast, so like you can take two free Brutal Swings. No problem whatsoever. The opponent comes into a Typhlosion here. Um, do I go for the bait here? Let's see. We farm up an absolute ton of energy. I go for the Stone Edge here. I would have liked throwing the move sooner because the opponent can threaten to get off two moves here. They go for the farm down. We do be able to, uh, we are able to uh, two and throw here, which will one shot the uh, Typhlosion. The opponent was just hard committing. I think at this point I bring in Cresselia because it can just absorb the damage so easily. Look at these super effective moves go through. Bang, nice brutal swing dude. Does like 20% to the Cresselia. It's going to take them probably four of these to knock me out, unless they get a, a bunch of Dragon Tails for you here. They swap into the Nita Queen, we come into Alligator, and that is absolute curtains. Um, I can even no shield this, I think, but I decide to safely shield up here, um, just to get the Shadow Claw damage for him, get the Hydro Cannon damage for him. Hydro Cannon does not one-shot a non-shadow. Shadow versus Shadow, I think it does one-shot. As you can see, that's pretty much perfect, right? We can let this through. Psycho cut it the whole way down. Come into Cresselia. One and throw the Moonblast on the Guzzy. Bang! Um, you're going to see here that... This is one of the few Pokemon that Cresselia can actually one-shot. We just take it out, and that's absolute curtains for the opponent. GG's. Nidoqueen also has been quite common. There's so many Pokemon to build for Ultra League. That's one of the things that kind of sucks about Ultra League currently, man. It's so XL heavy. Like, look at this matchup right here. XL Pokemon. Look at my team. We're using uh, free, free Pokemon with elite TMs, plus two of them are legendary. <laughs> um, so, like, the accessibility for Ultra League is really bad at the minute. So many level 50 Pokemon, so many legendaries. Um, I think it's it hasn't been this bad for a while actually. Ultra League was fairly accessible for a good amount of time, but it's it's pretty inaccessible currently. I think that's one of the things that annoys me. Um, there are a few Pokemon that I want to build, but like I, I've spent a million and a half dust on this league this week. I built the Machamp, the, the Pangoro, I rebuilt a better Cobalion. Uh, what else did I build? Uh, Licky Licky, Clefable. All of these new Pokemon, and I still feel like I don't have anything for Ultra League. I feel like I'm struggling to come up with teams at this current moment in time, because um, I just feel a little bit limited in what I have. It's very, very difficult to build. Anyway, guys, the opponent goes for a Sniper Freezing. We catch it on the um, the Cobalion. They go for the player off there, which is quite surprising. I guess they were going. Oh, we get this the kick down as well. That's that's absolutely nasty. The opponent comes back into the Gator. I'm just gonna punch it right away. Hopefully, whatever is in the back is kind of weak to this, and the opponent actually shields. Which is super interesting. <laughs> the shield in the top left, and we'll hop into the next one with a Talonflame lead. This is a great lead, however, what always ends up happening with Talonflame, they always end up getting a farm down, and they farm down, like, whatever Pokemon I'm about to bring in here, right? The Cobalion in this case. Um, I guess I came into Cobalion because I want to threaten the Talonflame with the, uh, the big move. This is non-Shadow Gator, so this is perfectly fine for me to play out a little bit. I'm just sacking the Cobalion, I'm not trying to feed the Talonflame energy here. I'm anticipating the opponent will want to swap out here quite soon. Is this a match where we just anticipate it and Stone Edge the Talonflame? That would be pretty funny. Um, okay, the opponent actually says in the throw move. I think here, if I'm shielding, I should definitely go for- Yeah, I do go for the Stone Edge. There's no way the opponent respects this. There's absolutely no way the opponent lets it go. Good games, thanks for playing, basically, at this point. Unless they have something that's absolutely horrible for Cresselia. We can take one Hydro Cannon, farm it down with our own Gator, and we're looking to be in a very chill position here. The opponent's still locked in. Yeah, they must have not had anything too great in the back. So there is Talonflame. That can be very, very awkward. Um, if it gets misaligned, if they get a farm down. So just be very, very cognizant of that. Don't allow the Talonflame to ramp up, because if they ramp up, GG's, thanks for playing. We go for Hydro Cannon. Um, I think I respect the Moonblast here. They more often than not do go for it. They actually go for Meteor Mash here, which is resisted. Kind of annoying. Um, just for reference, for Alligator can live Meteor Mash, so you definitely can just take that. Or sorry, can live a Moonblast, so you can just take it. I decide to catch the Moonblast on the Cresselia here. Bang, does about 30%. And in comes Giratina. Once again, like, even though they're doing Shadow Claws, they're doing Shadow Sneaks, I don't consider this to be a horrible matchup for Cresselia. We can make it to two Moonblasts, absolutely no problem. We've taken a Moonblast off the Cofable, we've taken Shadow Claws for Shadow Sneak. We're still not dead out here, and I think I even survived the Shadow Sneak. Cresselia, just ridiculously bulky. We survived that 1 HP and get off the Moonblast. 
I could have considered undercharging here, because I don't get any energy, which kind of sucks. Um, the opponent comes back in. Oh, they come into their own gator. And I think we're in an okay position here. We're so far ahead. Sorry, blah, 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 blah. We're so far ahead on energy. The opponent makes a very nice catch on the Clefable. This should still be okay here. I've got a fairly decently attack weighted gator. Um, we do win most CMPs here, unless the opponent's running just like red IVs or something. Um, I'm pretty fine to let this go, because Cobalion can basically come in and go for a Stone Edge. This is perfectly fine. We're up a shield. Um, we can take a Hydro Cannon, no problem whatsoever. I think from full health we can even take two. It gets a little bit sketchy, of course, with the Shadow Claws, but yeah, we live that very, very comfortably. I'm going to go straight for Stone Edge. Stone Edge does more damage. Um, it's obviously a lot more efficient to go for Secret Sword. So if you're in those types of positions, go for Stone Edge. Uh, otherwise, just go for Secret Sword. In the next battle here, we get a Deca Dewey at Decidueye. Um, the opponent swaps straight out, so I'm assuming they're on Astonish. Um, they come into Licky Licky. This is such a hard wall for it, even with Earthquake. I think I do it. No, I do let it go. I, I thought I might have respected this, but bang, Shadow Ball. They're going to need like three of those Shadow Balls to knock me out. I'm going to just fill my boots here. In, in Go Battle League, if you ever get a situation like this where like the opponent it, energy just does nothing to you, you live like three moves off them, you fill your boots here. You absolutely fill your boots. Um, we're getting up to very close to 100 energy. If the opponent shields, they're going to have to double shield because we do win CMP here. The opponent lets it go, and back in comes Decidueye. As expected, the opponent's on Astonish. Makes perfect sense. That's why they would swap out. We come into Gator once again because I figure that there's something else that's going to be weak to the Akabalian. Isn't quite true. It is this thing right here. Ah, this is kind of getting awkward now because we've got the Cresselia on the other thing. I, I definitely was banking on the fact that uh, we really needed to keep Cobalion alive. I was thinking we might see a Drapion, a Poison Dark, or of some sort. I, I thought it was something that we would really need Cobalion for. Um, however, Gator Up Energy can just kind of run through most things. The so people struggling to keep up with it. They've taken a Hydro Cannon. We get a catch on Cresselia, which is absolutely fantastic. Now, as far as the other Pokemon's concerned, the Decadui Decidui, um, they're already pretty low. All I need to do is basically commit to a farm down. Um, I think the hardest hitting move they can go for is a Frenzy Plant. I think I end up deciding to build up to back to back moves. Quite lucky the opponent didn't go for a catch right there. Um, I was trying to watch out for it, and we should be in a very good position here. Despite the Astonish, like, once again, Cresselia is super thick. We'll get off the Moonblast. It doesn't quite knock them out, but we do come into Gator to get the Shadow Claw through, and that's GG's. Tentacruel lead, not very comfortable. Ah, again, this Pokemon's just everywhere. We bring in the Cresselia. The opponent probably assumes we're on the uh, future side if we're coming in here. You can sort of somewhat make your way through this matchup with Grass Knot. You do add pace to Grass Knot. Psycho Cuts add up over time. You can somewhat play this out. Um, as you can see, that does chip a decent amount. The opponent swaps into Gator. So the good thing is we overfarmed a lot, meaning it's very difficult for the opponent to swap out. They put a shield on the gator. We live any move at this point still, and we're going to get off another grass nod. So I'm pretty happy with this, because if I can get my own gator ahead in energy, um, we're looking to be in a good position. We hold on to the Cresselium, and I'm going to commit to a massive farm down. The opponent goes for a crunch. You only need to uh, two Hydro Cannons in this matchup. There's no real need to go for crunch. We end up getting a CMP time, which is absolutely beautiful here. The opponent shields it, and I'm thinking, yeah, we let this go. We let this go, right? We've got two shield Cabalion. I even survived that move. The opponent comes back into Tenta. Two shield Cabalion versus the world. I'll take it. Um, if it's a Talon Flame, we've got Stone Edge. If it's anything else, we'll just go for Secret Swords. We should be in a very fine position here. Um, Tentacruel is so good though, like look how well it's doing into this Cabalion. Um, I decide to bring in the Cresselia, just to absorb the energy. Yeah, I do end up shielding here. I was going to say I was tempted to shield, because this energy could be very, very useful. If Gator comes back in, we can just get rid of it. Um, we can't quite Psycho Cut down, unfortunately. But I'm thinking, like, we might as well keep this alive. Um, we could potentially Grass Knot something, and it is a Hippowdon. So I'm very, very lucky that I shielded that move. Had I not shielded that move, I could have been just in huge, huge trouble. Now at this range, uh, we actually end up getting a catch here on probably a Weller Ball, so um, I, I just shielded just in case, right? I know they're in Secret Sword range, and I'm not sure if I make it to the move. I think I do end up making it to the move with Cresselium, but honestly, in situations like that, there's no point risking it. Secret Sword knocks out, that's going to be GG's well played. Like I said, guys, uh, we went 19, 1, and 5 with this team. There's another 4, 1 for you. And I think this might have been the set where I had the draw. This team's super good. I, I consider this team like 20 out of 25. That one draw was just a complete scam, right? So I'm going to say I won 20 out of 25 here. Um, 20 wins, 5 losses, extremely good. Like I said, Talon Flame is one of the more awkward things, but it's not super common. You do see it from time to time. I do recommend playing this team in a flexible way. Don't necessarily stay in and like sacrifice your Gator in the lead. You know, oftentimes you need your Gator to beat something in the back if they have any fire types. Um, and like I said, Gator is just so neutral and so good across the board. Having it alive at any sort of point in the match is never a bad thing. There's not really that much that hard walls it. You know, even Venusaurs and things like that, like free Hydro Cannons, gets them extremely low. It's never a bad thing to have Gator in your team. And by the way, this matchup right here, 
you're going to see exactly what I mean about having a uh, Moonblast. Bang! Does a decent little chip. And we actually get the debuff here as well. Meaning, the opponent definitely does not one-shot me. They probably will get a jab down, which is a little bit awkward. Don't like that whatsoever. But the opponent ends up throwing a move, so I'm pretty happy with this. And um, we can let the Cresselia go. I'll probably come back in with the Feraligator here. Just go for Hydro Cannon immediately. Unfortunately, the opponent goes for a Snipe. I end up letting this go, because I'm like, you know what? You have to crunch me, right? We come in with Cobalion. This opponent's team is very weak to Cobalion. Cobalion's a huge core breaker for them. And I haven't really given this Pokemon enough light. This Pokemon is really, really good now. Um, I've been a huge fan of Cobalion for a while, even whenever it was sort of outside the meta, whenever all the fires were around and all the polys were around. This thing used to absolutely shit all over Greedent. I love this Pokemon for that reason alone. Um, but this season, it, with all the Poison Darks, a lot of Guzzies, Stone Age coverage is so nice for the, the likes of Talonflame. I think this Pokemon is super good. We should be seeing a Cobalion sweep here. I recognize that I need to get rid of the Tenta immediately. Go for the Secret Sword, bang, that'll get rid of them. And we should be in a fine position here. Uh, back in comes the Skunk. Skunk is fairly glassy. Can they take a Secret Sword here? Maybe just about. We have a Hydro Cannon banged. Bang. Wombo combo play. That's GG's, thanks for playing. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Have a fantastic rest of your day. If you haven't yet done so, drop a like, subscribe to the channel. Last but not least, and most importantly, have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll catch you all next time.